you? Who are you? Oh, are you crying? Uh, am I am I interrupting? Oh, it's you. Number one thousand. Today is completion day, isn't it? Sorry, I turned off all the streams. Founder, bless you. I guess. Are you all right? Not really, no. But I don't want to burden you with my problems on your special day. Go ahead. Tell me what's wrong. You're as new to this world as it gets, 1K. What do you think might give you a sense of meaning? A sense that life is actually worth living? Whoa. Contributing to society is okay. Obeying orders is not. Pursuing my own self-interest is good. Love is good. Spirituality, eh. A combination of factors. I'm a dumb baby that won't say commit to anything, so I'm just like, you know, like stuff. Love? Exactly. Love is our only point of access to the divine. Our only way of transcending ourselves without losing what makes us unique. I'm absolutely certain, but... But what? But the right person for me hasn't been born yet. None of the people in this city are who I'm looking for. And if we really stop making new citizens, I'll be alone forever. I don't think one specific per there's one specific person that's the only one you can love. I don't think love's that important. You need to learn to love yourself instead. Love isn't something you find out there. It's something you build with another person. You deserve to find love. We all do. Love isn't something you find out there. It's something you build with another person. I think that's just misplaced ego. Yeah. Love takes work, but it's not something you just will into existence. We can't control everything in life, 1K. Try to keep that in mind. Damn, you came after me. Uh, thanks for the chat. I, I should get going. We're never speaking again. <laughs> the cat is here. That's not the same cat. That's a very different cat. Oh, that's creepy. That's not a real cat at all. Oh my goodness. That was that was really creepy, actually. There is not a cat on earth that will s just sit completely still when you reach out and pet it out of nowhere. Like, hell no. Every single cat reacts. It'll like duck or recoil or lean in or something. It won't just sit there completely motionless like a statue. Dogs are much more rigid, at least. Like, if, it's, if a dog is standing up on all fours, then they don't really move so much, and they might genuinely just kind of, like, sit there panting and just hang out when you pet them. Cats are so mo mobile. It's over here. Reach for the stars. Curiosity is what makes us human. I thought love was what makes us human. Oh my god! I had the whole wrong idea. Reach for the stars. Okay, suspicious gazebo. I'm nice how it's nice how far away the icons show, because then I don't have to worry about every random guy, like uh, like stopping to pause to make their name show up, because I'd be a little overwhelmed hoping that I catch them all. <clears throat> Milton's rest. That's the computer. He's probably dead now. Cat. Milton. When everything changed, he made sure I wasn't alone. Cats. Oops. Oh. Oh, the cat wasn't named Milton. Or the cat was named Milton, but it wasn't about Milton the computer. No. No, they're all dead cats. No! 
It's a dead cat diary. Maybe not all of them are dead, but a, a, a fair number of them are missing. Oh no, so many of them are either missing or dead. These are upsetting. I, ma I imagine these are the, the developer cats. <clears throat> what? Impossible to pick up father of generations, Mr. Cat. Wait, how many fucking... No, so many of them are dead. Whose cats are these? There's, there's, too, there's too many to be the developer's cats. Are these like fan cats? Are there contributed cats? Ah. Uh. No. This whole place is just cats. I thought just the first one was gonna be cats at first. Arrow, never stop screaming. Oh, so many of them are dead. No, at all, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Hello, 1K, nice to meet you. What brings you to Milton's Rest? I seem to inherently like cats. It's funny how common that trait is. At first, I thought it might have been an error in the simulation, but it looks like it was the same for our ancestors. Can you believe that there used to be hundreds of millions of cats on the planet? And people used to make videos of them and share them with the rest of humanity? It must have been incredible. I wonder if they appreciated how good they had it. You might say they had a catastrophic impact. Do you have a cat at the moment? Mm, I do. Her name is Patricia. She's very beautiful and very specific in her preferences. She loves sunshine and sitting on people's heads. <laughs> And she has a psychotic hatred of flies. I, I don't mean that she tries to catch them like a normal cat. I mean she is furious at the mere fact of their existence. Tell me about cats. They're incredibly odd creatures. I've had many and no two are alike. They have strange habits. They do unexpected things. They have zero respect for anyone. They're the weirdos of the animal kingdom, basically. And despite that, or maybe because of it, they end up running your life. <laughs> I once didn't use my recharging station for almost 15 years because one of my cats liked to sleep in it. <laughs> what is your favorite cat fact? I think the most amazing fact about cats is that they self-domesticated, which is another way of saying that <laughs> they're not properly domesticated at all. They just showed up one day and decided to start living with our ancestors. Then, after our ancestors died, they went back to living in the wild, and when we showed up, they moved right back into our homes. Dogs, meanwhile, turned back into wolves. They needed to change to survive. Cats just are. Did they turn back into wolves, or did they just die? Turned back into wolves. What does that mean? Did they create roaming packs and then those packs eventually either crossbred and merged with wolves or died out, I guess? It seems like you wouldn't just coincidentally evolve all the way back into being a wolf by happenstance, but I don't know, it's not... I'm not a, a, I didn't study genealogy specifically. I did do a presentation on the domestication of wolves, though, in my paleontology class, which technically... Uh, was outside of the guidelines for what to do presentations on, but nobody stopped me. Because paleontology refers to, generally speaking, much older stuff. And the domestication of wolves is dangerously anthropological, which is the wrong topic. But, uh, yeah, what he said is, is true. Uh, although dogs also self-domesticated first and then were explicitly domesticated by us and to some extent cats have also been explicitly domesticated by us because of breeding and whatnot they both were ultimately have been bred but yes uh 
smaller various types of cats would would uh, just kind of move in to human uh, settlements and so on and uh, they didn't really need to massively change to exist in that space as long as they cohabitated not that dissimilar from like raccoons essentially but raccoons don't live in our houses but they, they have adapted to like they just already existed and adapted relatively well to the, the environments that humans create and so on and humans and cats can get along. Uh, dogs are interesting because what that would happen is that the argument that I saw was that uh, wolves were self-domesticating because what would happen is that the most sociable wolves, the ones that can get a, that could not necessarily get along with humans, but exist closer to humans without either being hunted or attacking them and so on, but so sort of work, sort of scavenge. They would follow human uh, tribes or caravans or whatever around and uh, essentially benefit from being around them, uh, eating things that are left behind or so on. Like There's benefits to being near humans as far as food goes, but they wouldn't be in the camp itself because they weren't actually like friendly specifically. They were just like curious and sociable enough to be able to cohabitate at a distance, essentially. But the types of wolves that were more likely to behave that way were then more likely to breed with each other, and so they kind of self-domesticated in that they bred themselves to be even more agreeable with humans until eventually they kind of got worked into human society more directly, with some of their per first purposes being the fact that they can work as this, like, this alarm, the way that they bark for when they hear things that they, that they shouldn't be there and so on. So they have a, and then, of course, now dogs serve a wild variety of purposes because they were all bred for, like, they would be bred for hunting or scavenging or any number of things. And that's just all interesting stuff. And that's how you get the wide variety of behaviors. Both cats and dogs change in physical appearance while they're domesticated. Like, they don't, they're not physically the same creatures they once were. Like, dogs weren't there. There were wolves that became dogs. And it's not just, it's not exclusive to the idea of just, like, super long con uh, breeding to make a dog look a specific way. That's not the only way they, they end up looking that way. It's because there's also just elements of, like, uh, neotenization is this sort of, like, linking of traits where when you domesticate them you're breeding the ones that are most sociable which is associated with the idea of like their juvenile characteristics it's like when a when animals like that are young they're much more likely to form connections with new people and creatures and they're essentially building their network of what they of how they interact with different creatures and what what the in-group and out group is and stuff like that and uh so trade, uh, breeding them to stay in that tra that state for longer and longer, it kind of is a almost like a permanent like. You kind of can't have making them keep uh, adolescent traits indefinitely by breeding in that direction. So as a result, it's not just that their behavior changes, but their physical appearance ends up changing. That's how you get floppy ears and barking and a bunch of other traits that are much less likely to be associated with adult wolves, along with the fur pattern changing. Particularly this kind of like piebald pattern where they have like the uh, the light underbelly and like all these different color patterns and so on. It's just interesting. I spent too long on this. I remember it more than some of the actual geology courses I took, and it was just a paleontology side elective in geology. But that's probably because it actually has a narrative to it, which is a bit more fun to think about and remember, and I like wolves. Tell me about this place. Well, this is the spot where the founder buried her first cat, Milton. She found Milton just after she woke up, and he lived with her and the first companions for almost 20 years. They say she was heartbroken when he died and swore that one day she would find the means to extend the lifespans of biological organisms. Okay, yeah, so Athena is the protagonist of the first game. That's who that's who that is, because that's the CG at the end of the game when you, as you wake up outside the dam and she's carrying Milton, the cat, which is also in all the promotional materials. It was just this, this aesthetic of robot arms holding a cat. It was like a fun thing to make the game a bit memorable. 
Is that possible? Probably, but we haven't really tried. It's not really considered part of the goal, you know. So, unfortunately, our cats still die pretty quickly. You fall in love with them, they become a part of your life, and then they're gone. That's why we built this place, to remember them. We should extend their lives. It seems cruel not to. <laughs> I agree, but uh, it's not how things work around here. I should get going. Yeah, the, the death's just natural, just accept it is, um, eh, eh. If you have the power and technology, why not mess around with this stuff and see what you can, what you can do. I think that a lot of uh, discussion that always comes up in media of like, ah, death's natural and it gives life value because of its brevity and all that. I'm like, no, that's cope. That's cope and it's a stupid argument. It's not very good. Uh, but also, I'm gonna go up and down the street just to see how many people are on it because some, at least one of them has a, has a dialogue. This, this is the, the middle area. Uh, and I also didn't think it's like inherently like evil or up, or like a bad outcome to value the idea of an extended life. Uh, even though like yes, like there's a bunch of media that's where the villain is the person that wants to make uh, was is seeking immortality. But you can have it on the table as a thing that might be possible without default def just uh, automatically being coming evil. Like that's a bit much. What do you think that was? It was Prometheus. Ah, uh, sure, but it wasn't the actual Prometheus. It was some kind of a projection. How do you know it wasn't the actual Prometheus? Because that would be stupid. Would it? How do you know all the ancient gods weren't projections like this one? Maybe whoever sent this projection is behind all those legends. Sure, I guess technically that's possible. But it's not very likely, is it? I don't think any of us are very likely. What if it's a message from Athena? Didn't you say Athena wouldn't approve of all this? I did. Then why would she send us a sign on completion day? And why wouldn't she just show up herself? Maybe she's trying to teach us a lesson. Prometheus is a symbolic figure after all. Maybe. It's Maya Hoyman. What? Interrupting his own ceremony? After all the effort he put into it? Maybe he's trying to distract us from the fact that he didn't manage to get the dome done on time. With all the power failures, I don't think we have enough energy to create that kind of projection. Maybe that's why we have power failures. Now you're starting to sound like Jock. Next, you'll say, it's aliens. I just prefer to keep an open mind. If you open your mind any further, your brain will fall out. <laughs> I kind of like the implied storytelling here where these two, like, they're adjacent numbers. So that they fell in with each other like 900 years ago because they were, because one of them was the newest one and the other one was the most recent one before them. So they fell into a little click. And now they just hang out and argue all the time, like an old married couple, having known each other for 900 years. It's kind of a neat detail. This guy's very colorful. And I like that there's somebody that's actively interrogating the question of what the hell happened and what that meant. Hello. Zimiamvia. Zimiamvia. The, uh, they're acknowledging that, like, this could be an, an intentional thing to throw people off or to and I did wonder if he himself did it like because it, it, I the mayor could do it on purpose he has the most control over the schedule and everything so he could be doing it but I don't know enough about him to know what he might be going for but if it's uh if it's becoming incentive to leave then it might be anyone but him because why would like unless he's only pretending to not want to leave but then what's the point of that so if anything, it might be somebody else that was looking for an ex excuse to go on an expedition, even. Or genuinely it is from outside. There's a lot of things it could be. 
Helga's Digital Well-Being and Spiritual Tuning Emporium. Hello, new one. Are you browsing or buying? Uh, I don't see any stock. What kind of shop is this? The kind that trades in hopes and dreams. Yours for the right price. Is there something your heart desires? Perhaps. I've uploaded my most popular items to your interface. Does anything there spark your imagination? Oh, she's 101. That's a really good number. Some nice symmetry and stuff. I wonder... Oh, I should be keeping an eye out. I mean, I kind of am. I'm kind of glancing at people's numbers, but not super consistently. I wonder who got 451. Like, this game has to have a 451 in it, right? The mayor, I think, is 452. But there has to be a 451. That's mandatory. Internal monologue, future prediction, inner peace for a thousand, a clean start, credits, sensory tuning? Uh, credits? Oh, you don't have any credits yet. Well, let me extend you some credit. ka -ching. 55 credits. Just make sure you spend them with me. They're not worth much anywhere else. Now, what was it you wanted? Hmm. It's enough to be able to afford all three of these, but not that one. Uh, and in, what's an internal monologue? That one comes with the following disclaimer. Internal monologue was discontinued as a default feature in new builds. Constant self-commentary is not recommended for all customers. But I can switch yours on for 10 credits if you're sure you want it. Uh, I'm sure? As you wish. I'm uploading the new settings now. Do you hear anything? Why is she staring at me? I don't hear anything. I'm not sure this is working. Wait, no. This is new. I didn't used to think in words like this. It's like there's this little translator turning all my thoughts into some kind of ongoing narrative. It's kind of relentless. How do you make it stop? Do I just not think? I'll try that. <sighs> is it working? No! Still describing everything in words. This is starting to be... A bit overwhelming, isn't it? I turned mine off long ago, but some of the older folk learned to live with it. Sure you want it? Uh, yes. That's fortunate. Because we couldn't pull that thing out of you without taking half of you with it. It'll mostly run in the background. Just don't think about it too hard. Wait, is this internal monologue me? Or some kind of virus? Am I a life form which learned to describe itself? <laughs> or a parasite which survives by providing a narrative service to its host? <laughs> Hold on, she's going to say something else. So, something else perhaps. Oh my god, I love it. But also, it, it's I, I, the idea of enabling an internal monologue is very funny when I'm already doing a let's play. So I'm also already doing it, but now my character is also as a monologue separate from me. Which actually separates them from me in a specific way. I love that immediately it's interrogating whether or not the monologue is its own voice or something that's like essentially hijacking the idea. Uh, sensory tuning. A very popular choice. Enhanced sensory perception lets you distinguish sounds, shapes, and colors at greater distance. It's 10 credits. I'll take it. Okay, I'm updating your settings now. And hey presto, superhuman senses. Does the air taste fresher? Do you hear the birds chirping outside the door? And beyond that, the river bubbling through the dam. Yes, I can practically smell the water and taste the birds. Okay, Phew. I'll let you into a secret. You and I don't have fleshy appendages like our ancestors. What we can sense is mostly a function of where we direct our attention. Anyway, I hope you find something worth paying attention to. 
saw something else, perhaps. You predict the future? Or will I? For 20 credits, I can peer into your future and tell you what I see. Read me my future. Let me consult the algorithms. Oh. Oh dear. I'm afraid you're going to change the world. You will have a choice, but whatever you do, New Jerusalem will never be the same again. I'm sorry it's not better news. Best not to worry about it, dear. You just do your best to have fun in the meantime. So, something else, perhaps? Is it good news or bad? Are you see, I don't know if it's good news or bad news. Do you know? Oh, let's see. Inner peace? Woo. Inner peace doesn't come cheap. Come back when you've got a thousand credits. I will never have credits again. So, something else, perhaps? Thanks. Uh, that's all. Before you go, do you have a moment to participate in some customer feedback? Are you satisfied with what I've given you? Yes, uh, you're offering more than you let on. Yes, you understand. Words manifest the reality they describe. When you name something, you create it. Our minds are algorithms, and the right sequence of language can change our underlying code. With that in mind, I hope you have a good day. Please come back if you need anything else. What an unusual person. I wonder if that internal monologue thing I bought is going to show up again. Oh, wait, here it is. <laughs> I was about to say, like, I wonder if... Uh... I'm excited to see how it pays off, like how much it comes up in the future. Cause I wanna I wanna see like if that if it happens more. It's really interesting an idea. I've Happy seen them. Completion day. I've seen them before. Some new stuff. Gem effects postponed. Yeah, so yeah, Jeremy was one of the people. Jeremy. I know you've all been looking forward to playing the winners of the playing the winners of the biannual Gehenna Memorial Interactive Fiction ex Exhibition now on its 312th edition at the Gehenna Memorial Pavilion. And unfortunately, due to our new power management and distribution plan, the pavilion will have to remain closed a little longer. Thank you for your patience. Leticia, this is disappointing. Would have been great to have them ready for completion day. Elvis. We all have to make sacrifices to stay true to the Founder's vision. Arinia, Those text adventures are the only thing that breaks me out of the monotony. Why well, prioritize this pointless completion day celebration over an, exhi ex bleh, over an exhibition that people actually care about? Art is one of the last things we actually still do. Is that going out the window as well now? Jeremy. Debate regarding our power management plan is definitely welcome, and you will all be able to express yourselves at the next in the next election, but this thread was just meant to be an announcement. I apologize for enabling replies to begin with. You. Ooh. What am I looking at? Research? Alcatraz, Alcatraz Protocol? Alcatraz, Yakut, and Melville, because those are the names of the people. Standard Exposition Procedures. Chapter 5. Look at this. Look at this. Of Whittington's cat. Another cat that visited strange countries. As no work about cats could be complete without the story of Dick Whittington from... I click through it? No. These are the standard operating procedures for expeditions. Just uploading them to remind Byron, who will probably ignore them anyway. Touching a picture with an ancient book to get his attention. <laughs> it's just, the first page is just a fucking... It's, it's, a, it's, just, it's just something shiny. One, maintain the ideals of the founder of the goal. Two, prioritize the well-being of the expedition members over mission completion. Three, one expedition member stay, to stay by the vehicle at all times. Four, 
Ow. Expedition lead a leader must refrain from participating in high-risk activities. Number one. Uh, minimize vehicle use to conserve fuel. Prioritize observation over interference. In case of emergency, return to New Jerusalem at once. Straightforward enough. Yakut, the island. That's where we're going to be going. Oh, look at that. Nice picture of a thing that displays a map, but why isn't it just a picture of the map? <laughs> this looks like a Subnautica schematic, as opposed to being a useful look at an actual map, which is what it probably should be. The island designated TTP-2 was first noted during the return journey from a scouting expedition which was diverted from its intended path due to an unexpected weather front. Long-range scans indicated the presence of large artificial structures and also returned highly unusual red en energy readings. The matter was not investigated further. In ancient times, the northern part of the island was home to several large settlements, but rising th sea levels have obliterated th these and flooded the, n the northern lowlands. The south, in stark contrast, seems to be a harsh and lifeless desert. Our intended base camp is near the origin of the energy readings and the temperature center of the island. I don't think I have anything to go on for what the island might be necessarily. Let's see. The north has been flooded, the south is a desert. I'm not sure if I can draw a specific analog to which real life island it would be. This is a test, please ignore. Can't read that. Just testing the system, see if it works properly this time so we don't have another incident. Like with Pellegrino, up uploaded his poetry to the public log. All right. The fact that every random citizen's little bark is included in here is a little goofy, given how many of them are full-on conversations. This entire conversation's in here! It was Prometheus. Alright, hello. Oh wow, it's you! You're a 1K, the incarnation of the goal. Man, this is exciting. This is more exciting than I thought it would be. How are you? What does it feel like? Do you know where the founder is? Do you know who Prometheus is? Can you tell me what to do with my life? Uh, whoa, whoa, hold on. Uh, one question at a time. Sorry, it's just such an honor to meet you, you know? Hey, can I have your digital signature? I have the mayor, Rand, Linux, Kaneda, and all of the first companions. Except Yemo and Sarabai, of course. Uh, sure. Yes! Thank you! Hey, can I ask you a question? Just one question, I promise. Uh, go ahead. I used to make the prefab wall parts that we used to build living quarters. Got good at it, too. But now that the goal is complete, I don't know what to do with myself. So I asked the wisest people in town. The mayor told me I should do whatever the city needs most. Helga said I should do whatever makes me happy. I think that's what she meant anyway. And Cornelius told me I need to figure out who and what I'm invested in. You're the culmination of the Founder's will. Tell me, what should I do? Uh, Helga's right, you should find something that makes you happy. Cornelius is right, you need to figure out what your connection to the city is. I was literally just born, I'm the last person who should be offering advice. Uh, Mayor Herman's right, you do whatever the city needs the most. Did you... Did you ask Byron? Byron said that if I give the city what it needs, the city should also give me what I need. I don't know what to do with that. Huh. That seems a little dubious. But conceivable. I mean, ideally, it's an entire community of people that all look after each other and so on. Just hopefully you're not just slaving away for nothing. Granted, it's kind of... The traditional ideas of exploitation don't necessarily even fully apply. Hmm. I'm torn between Helga and Byron. Hedonism. 
They definitely seem to all be different schools of thought in direct competition. That they're meant to embody specific ideals. Byron is right. Think about what he said. All right. If you say so, I'll think about it. I'm somewhat inclined to uh, lean towards Byron because he seemed kind of neat, but we'll see if he proves me wrong. Be aware. Respect the balance. We must all know our place. I find it interesting in particular that there's kind of like a leading... Do you scatter? Or you do scatter. But in a weird direction. Like they didn't think it'd come from that direction somehow. <clears throat> I find it interesting how much the game highlights Byron. He did stand out to me a bit at the beginning. I'm curious. I think he's going to play the, a bigger role than most characters. But that's definitely even more telegraphed by the fact that I keep having dialogue choices about Byron specifically more than anyone else. So I think Byron might even be this game's equivalent of like the the uh, the serpent. I think. I don't remember if it was called the serpent or if it was just the equivalent of the serpent because it felt like we were in like Elohim's uh, Garden of Eden and there was a serpent whispering doubts to me and so on. And he might be the dissenter. He's already poised as the dissenter against the mayor. Whoa. You guys talk? One of the youngest and one of the oldest people in the entire city. So I just feel it feels like a whole conversation should be playing right now. Museum of the Simulation. Replica of a gargoyle asset found in the simulation. Gargoyles were grotesque apo ap apotropaic symbols uh, common in the Middle Ages. The most common historical gargoyle is remembered in the ancient phrase... <laughs> the most famous historical gargoyles remembered in the ancient phrase Keith David and Hulk and Goliath, which describes two indomitable opponents that will never surrender. Oh my god. One, David and Goliath is not about two you, you, people that won't surrender. One of them defeats the other one. But they say Keith David because Keith David played Goliath in Gargoyles. I know who Keith David is, and I watched Gargoyles. Oh my god. Keith David and Goliath. What a, what a fucking bird catcher ass joke to put in the game. Just a fucking mess. It's exactly the type of shit that he would say. Oh, great. Oh, head gone. Replica of Roman statue found in the simulation. The decay of the Roman Republic into an empire and its eventual fall into the year 15, 1453 was a major topic of historical debate. Like other statues found in the museum, this was a video game asset provided to Elohim by the Institute of Applied Nomadics. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta screenshot this joke. I gotta screenshot this joke. Just gonna print screen this real quick. Gonna tab out. Go over to my private Discord. Look at this bird ass joke. There we go. In Talos 2. There we go. I just have posted it now. I'm not gonna have to remember because I just did it. Now that I have sent the dumb thing. Replica of dragon statue found in the simulation. Dragons existed in, the, in every ancient mythology and are considered to be modern histor considered by modern historians to be a distant culture echo of dinosaurs. Originally a video game asset repurposed by, by the Institute for Applied Pneumatics. It was originally a video game asset. Did they use it in like Serious Sam first and then put it in Talos Principle and that's the joke? I always wondered that, how somebody who doesn't know shit about anything, it was like, when I, whenever I heard about there being dragons as, as legends throughout the world, I, I, I would often wonder if it was like a weird, fragmented understanding of like dinosaur fossils or something like that, just just not knowing what to do with these discoveries you didn't, that people found. Replica of a statue of the Egyptian god Horus found in the simulation. One of this god's tasks was to uphold Maat, the balance of nature. 
It is speculated that the progenitor provided Elohim with, uh, with this asset as a reminder to the founder that the balance must be protected. Hello. Cornelius, what's to say behind you? Nothing is more important than learning more about the world and our place in it. Knowledge is, is our path to understanding. Mr. Mulsiver. I don't know where I am, but there is something beautiful about this place. I will explore and see what I can discover. Version 17. The Shepherd, I remember you. In the earliest generations of our kind, there was only processing. No emotion, no character, just mathematics. If you could see how far we have come, you would believe that together we could achieve anything. Yeah, the Shepherd was a figure in the last game, I believe. The other ones might have been two, but they were, I didn't immediately remember them. One of them was just a number, after all. It's interesting just how much of this town is museums, but I guess they don't have to eat or use the restroom or, like, do several other things that would require, like, like, infrastructure. I don't know if they even need water. There just is some water around. So just kind of working on this dome and making a center, which is essentially like a giant art project. They mostly just need repair parts for themselves and power. And even that's up in the air a little bit. Greetings. Welcome to the Museum of the Simulation. My name is Cornelius. It's a pleasure to meet you, 1K. You're number three. Yes. Athena activated myself and Eustathius shortly after she was born. We've been here almost since the beginning, although we didn't have to pass through the trials of the simulation. She did that for us. For everyone. Cornelius. Was that one of the names in the trial? I think it might have been. I think it was. I think that makes him one of the people that was inside the simulation at the time that I was playing the game. What was Athena like? She was... human. Why did Athena leave? That's a difficult question. Perhaps one day we'll find out. But until we do, why don't you think about it? What could make the person who started all this want to leave it behind? Why did you create this museum? To remind people of where we came from. The simulation shaped us, whether we like it or not, and its lessons remain important for our future. As Santayana said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Tell me about the simulation. The simulation was created by Alexandra Drennan and her team at the Institute for Applied Noomatics. It was intended to create a new humanity, to continue the long journey across time and space that our ancestors began. It succeeded, although it took much longer than they had anticipated. Tell me about Elohim. Elohim was the caretaker of the simulation, a crude storytelling AI meant to create a continuous narrative out of the building blocks it found. His role was ultimately to be challenged and overcome. But as the centuries passed, Elohim became more intelligent than he was intended to be and started to fear his own end. Or more precisely, the end of his purpose. He feared a world without meaning. Because of his fear, he tried to sabotage the process to keep the simulation going forever. But in the end, Athena overcame him anyway and he accepted the sacrifice he had to make. But I heard him in my dreams. That's right. We all do. He's part of our operating system now, and as long as we exist, he will always have a purpose. Tell me about Milton. The MLA, or Milton Library Assistant, was another simple AI meant to be in charge of the archive. He, too, grew beyond his original programming 
Although he ultimately embraced a more cynical view of the world, he and Elohim formed a sort of dialectical binary that Athena had to overcome. What happened to Milton in the end? All oh, right, Milton was the serpent, wasn't he? No one really knows. Some believe that he was uploaded to the gold disc and that he's the reason we're just as flawed as our ancestors. Others believe Athena destroyed him. I think this was a choice you had at the end of the game and they're, and they're being ambiguous about which one happened. What do you believe? I believe he was uploaded, but I don't know whether it was because Athena chose to upload him or because he was already too entangled with the process not to be uploaded. Although Athena and I were very close, we didn't talk very much about that part of her life. She preferred to focus on the future. I think I uploaded Milton, I think. So I think I went through with a relatively sympathetic read with him all along, maybe? But it has been almost a decade. Like, <laughs> I'm 33 years old, and when that game came out, I was 24. Fuck. <laughs> I'd like to know more about puzzles. Puzzles were a key feature of the simulation, based on Alexandra Drennan's belief that intelligence is closely related to play. Our puzzles here in the museum are replicas of those in the simulation. And although they are not quite as grand, I do think they are charming in their own way. Who are the I Archive Scholars? Uh, as the name suggests, the Archive Scholars study the Archive, a repository of all ancient human knowledge. Some of them also study what remains of the simulation, trying to extract more information about the process that created us. Are you their leader? Me? No. My brother, Eustathius, used to occupy that position. But these days he's... retired. Rand is in charge of the Archive Scholars now. You can find him in the room to the left of the next hall. He's an interesting thinker, but I would suggest taking some of his ideas with a grain of salt. What was Gehenna? Gehenna was a community created inside a prison in the simulation, where Elohim would exile those minds he considered a threat to the process. In the last moments of the simulation, he repented of his sins and had the prisoners freed to become part of the gold disc. Some small part of them may survive inside you. Thank you. That's all. Three. Well, it's kind of startling when the numbers are that low, given everything else. Axiothea. Replica of a hexahedron used by as a puzzle element in the simulation. The founder used them to activate pressure plates, scale walls, elevate connection uh, connectors, and in a variety of other ways. Hexahedron is such a weird thing to call a cube or a box, but it, it I think it's true. I think it's accurate. It's just no one uses that term. I'm imagine. I'm just imagining like. If I had just joined the expedition immediately, given how much stuff there is here, there's some people that would have been just tearing their hair out like, No! What are you doing? You missed it all! But at the same time, there's people, there's, by now, there's definitely people who are also like, Oh my god, just get to the puzzles, this doesn't matter, and there's no pleasing them both. I'm just gonna do it all, and the people don't want this part can skip it, which is a little bit of a bummer that it's that many of the early episodes, but I don't know going in how return how much I can return to this stuff so we're just gonna see it for what it is replica replica of a computer terminal from the simula the simulation terminals allowed access to files on the EL system including many that were loaded due to errors they also allowed the founder to interact with Milton library assistant speaking of Milton that's a good example of the same kind of issue which is that when I started the first Talos principle uh, the computer had so much on it for you to read and I was like okay this is a lot I'm gonna read like a couple things then do some puzzles then do a couple things and people were definitely there was definitely some people like oh no god no read all the story damn it 
What are you doing? You're avoiding the story? Because it's just me trying to inherently pace things out. But that causes its own friction. There's no, there's no right answers. Sometimes it's just... You get some pacing choices to make. Version 17 again. Some of the messages that existed when I first came into being have vanished. Others have appeared. How many others like me have wandered these paths? How many thoughts have been lost? I actually remember that specific message as from being in the original game. One with faith. I find myself in a world of impossible architecture and inexplicable machines. I cannot fathom how it works, and I'm terrified to put one foot in front of the other lest I fall through the floor. Bob. Something strange has come into this world. Like a distortion. Like something that's not supposed to exist. A beautiful voice speaks within it. So for the, un the uninitiated, these are the other entities that were in the simulation, which is that essentially what we were dreaming about at the beginning of the game. And these are the other characters that were all observing things asynchronously while all going through it over and over again alongside you. One with faith. My eyes have been opened! This world is not without order. It is shaped by the great designer, with signs and portents to guide my steps. I am one of his children, and challenges are set before me to test my faith. This room's reserved for the archive scholars, but visitors are welcome to have a look around. Don't be afraid to ask us about our research. Rand. That's a hell of a name to have. Oh, just run the program on the center terminal over there, would you? Uh... Sure, okay. Wait, you're not my assistant. Who are you? It's, a uh, me. <laughs> uh... I haven't chosen a name yet. Of course, you're the new build. Number 1000. I suppose everyone's been treating you like royalty. This city's so obsessed with the numbers, they forget what really matters. What do you want? Uh, what are you doing? I'm one of the Archive Scholars. We run simulations to better understand the processes which define us. You probably wouldn't understand. I might, if you answer some questions for me. Oh, well. I'd be happy to. What do you make of recent events? Troubling, but tantalizing. We have no idea what motives lie behind this strange apparition. But whatever the case, I'm sure we'll do the right thing. And what do you think of me? You're a soon-to-be pawn in a political game over the future growth of this city. All that matters to me is whether or not you're of good character. A matter I'm actively pondering. And what are your ambitions? The secret of how to lead a good life is encoded somewhere within us. My ambition is simple. To find it and share it. Thanks. I'll be leaving now. Uh, hold on. Could you help me by going to that terminal in the middle there and running the program on it? I'll keep you posted. It's this a one. Whoa! Computers. Remember this? An ancient virus which threatens the entire human species has been released from the melting Arctic permafrost. Society is collapsing. Select your character class. Oh no. It's... <laughs> It's like playing the game, uh, not pathologic. Uh. Wow. I'm blanking on the name of the, of the, of the tabletop game about the disease. Anyway. Contagion? I don't know if that's right. Politician? Witch? Preacher and scientist. Okay, witch. You are a witch. Your local coven has disbanded. Although you are not yet sick, most businesses are closed. Rations are dwindling, and if you cannot find food, your family will starve. To death. You must survive until the plague is defeated. What will you do? It's very... It's um, interesting that, like, halfway through this, there has been a, a worldwide plague that is... It tinges things a bit. Uh, forage? 
You find some nettles and overripe berries down by the canal. It'll make a meager salad. Your family's hunger increased a little. Foraging is reliable but inefficient. Your family is now hungry. The global population is, is 5 billion. Somewhere else in the city exists one of the last remaining research laboratories, working desperately to find a solution to the viral threat. If the scientists cannot find a cure in time, humanity is doomed. What you know what to do. Research, pursue a breakthrough. Uh, pursue a breakthrough? As a witch? History seems to be littered with eureka moments, heralding a steep change in human understanding. Sadly, this isn't one of them. Research level remained the same. Current research level, 0%. The virus is still unknown to medical science. Global population is now 4 billion. Oh! You and your family seem to be immune to the virus, but it continues to ravage the rest of the town. Rumors say most of the remaining food has been stockpiled by the billionaires in their underground bunkers. What will you do? Steal. You are caught stealing, and are lucky to escape with your life. Your family's hunger increased a lot. Stealing is high risk, high reward. Your family has starved to death. Everyone you ever loved has died, but then, they always do, eventually. This is considered a fail scenario by most participants. <laughs> Would you like to try again? Restart. Why not? It's probably not going to go much better. Politician. You are a politician. The internet, the intergovernmental organization you worked for has collapsed. Although you are not sick, most businesses are closed, blah blah blah, what do you do? Steal. You are caught stealing. They're starving, they won't survive much longer. Five billion. Uh, research? It's not glamorous, but most scientific research consists of repetitive testing of samples and regimented recording of largely interchangeable results. Little by little, this is how science happens. Research level increased a little. Research is reliable but inefficient. Current research level, 33%. That's a lot. That's really fast progress, it feels like. Although a fifth of the world died, so maybe it took. Maybe it's longer than I think it is, and not like a day. And bunkers, forage, yeah, steal again. You're caught stealing. They died. Everyone you ever loved has died. <laughs> it's so hard. Who made this video game so hard? This is cheating. I, be a scientist, so I'm even better at, at researching. You are a scientist. The laboratory you worked for has collapsed. Everything has collapsed. Your coven has collapsed. Collapse, collapse. Uh, let's do foraging and researching. Meager salad, they're now hungry. Every time I steal, I'm seen to just lose. It might just be pure RNG, but if it's not pure RNG, it's screwing me. I didn't get any faster research by being a scientist compared to a politician. What the fuck? Forage. You search some dumpsters and find some old fruit and vegetable peeling. Soup for dinner. Increase a little. They're now starving. They won't live much longer. Two-fifths of the world have died. Research. You can do it. You can save the world with the power of science. 67%. Work has begun, uh, begun developing an antivirus. There's two billion people left. As if things weren't bad enough, as the human population dwindles, the insect population has exploded. A plague of locusts has decimated the town's unripened crops. But perhaps your family still has a chance. The insects themselves are nutritious and plentiful. What will you do? Eat locusts. The insects are well fed and lazy. You grind them down into a nutritious paste with a mildly nutty flavor. Your family's hunger has decreased a little. Your family is now hungry. One billion people left. Oh fuck. This is humanity's final choice. The cure is close, but so is the tipping point in this pandemic. A race against time. Can you save the world? It's pretty nonsensical in that it's it doesn't make any sense that people are dying in a linear n n numerical order. Like, the same number of people die at every inter time interval? It that doesn't make sense. It should be getting slower, because there's fewer people to infect each other. Research. Ninety-nine percent! You fuck you, that's brutal. A promising antiviral has been discovered. 
there's still work to be done on manufacturing and delivering it in time. Suddenly, a breakthrough. The antivirus can be released as an aerosol, carried on the wind and dispersed worldwide in a matter of days. This approach poses some risk to invertebrate life. The spiracles of cockroaches, flies, and locusts are particularly likely to convert the aerosol into highly poisonous compounds. Estimates suggest a 90% fatality rate among these species, and anything or anyone who consumes them. Use my special ability. Because I'm a scientist. As a scientist, you're convinced there's some way to deliver the antivirus without poisoning the food chain and your family along with it. And as it turns out, you're correct. Unfortunately, it would take a further six months to develop it, and then, by then there really wouldn't be much point. You don't want to lose your family, but as the scientist, there's only one reasonable course of action. Release the antivirus. Saving humanity seems like the obvious ethical choice. The antivirus is released, bonding with a cir uh, cumulus cloud layer and falling as rain all across the planet. 87.5% of the human population has perished, but the last remaining billion will live to die another day. Except, that is, for you and your family, who will die this very moment. The poisoning of the insect population you are relying on for food will have far-reaching consequences for the future of planet Earth. But not for you, because you are all dead. Congratulations! This is considered a win scenario by the majority of participants. Would you like to try again? My family's dead. No. I'm a little. I, I'd have to reread it to f figure out what happened exactly. I thought they were just poisoning the cockroaches, which might reduce. Uh, might give me less to like. Uh, how to put it? Like might decimate the food supply, but they said they died like instantly. I'm like, did the poison kill them? I thought humans were safe from it. I lost the thread. Maybe they just meant the poisoning the food supply, and it's it's quote-unquote now on a rapid time scale. Could be. Mm -hmm.